Hello, world. Thank you for joining us at D&D Beyond as we play House of Lament, the adventure in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, which is available now on the D&D Beyond Marketplace. So excited that you guys are here with us. Uh, I'm Joe Starr. I am the, uh, uh, this doesn't really fit. I'm the dark lord of content at D&D Beyond. Convincing, right? Uh, I am joined by my absolutely incredible team to play House of Lament today. Michael Galvis, Amy Dallin, and our community manager, Melly Doucette. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, you can find us here doing cool stuff like building custom uh, custom domains of dread uh, with Talison from Critical Role. I mean, there's one Talison, so I didn't need to specify from Critical Role. Uh, we do stuff like that every Tuesday and Thursday, so please come hang out with us, check us out. Uh, and uh, we're publishing new articles to help enhance your game of D&D every day on dndbeyond.com. Uh, we are super excited about this book. We've been crapping our pants about it. Uh, for weeks, basically. Uh, and um, we're just very thankful to the team at Wizards for birthing it uh, and putting it in our, in, our, in our hot, spooky little hands. Uh, I think I have uh, set up the spooky mood enough. What do you guys, do you guys feel like good and in, in the mood for, uh, for well, scares after that incredible intro? Yes, but I would just like to add one little thing, if I, if I may. Um, Absolutely. Joe. Uh, I just want to add that, you know, when we get natural 20s today, we're going to be giving away copies of Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft in the chat. So that's pretty amazing. What? Assuming we actually roll 20s, which our luck. We'll see. <laughs> I rolled two ones in less than an hour last time. So we'll see. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a, uh, and I uh, historically roll poorly as a DM. So uh, this will just be a lot of us falling on our faces, but hopefully it'll be scary and fun. And uh, with that, I think we are ready to explore the House of Lament. No living creature can continue for long to outlive a betrayal. If our reality, if this existence is made of matter, then what bonds it together is our bond. Promises made and promises kept. The broken pact stalks us, undying, unwavering and fueled by the darkness within. And while we rabbits may believe to be winning the race, slow, steady, and unsatiated, the darkness will overtake us. And where the darkness overtakes, where the dread is made manifest, lies a house. It has stood for weeks and it has stood for an age, but what is time to dread? Within silence and sound, Stillness and movement, famine and feast, where broken promises lie in wait, in the wood and stone of the house of Halvrist. <laughs> Dying <laughs> streaks <laughs> of moonlight struggle to break through the canopy of the dense forest, far from the traditional hunting paths preferred by the local nobility of Borka, the deep wilderness of the forest swallowing all sense of light and location, the damp and rot from recent downpours fill the air and sting the nostrils, and the forest is still, especially the woman pressed against a tree, eyes wide, shaking, fighting against her lungs, desperate for air, but the breath would make too much noise. It is nearby. She can hear the cracking of fallen limbs, the raggedness of its breath. The guttural growls of its torn throat make no language spoken on this plane. She is not safe. It is coming for her. She is not safe here. It is so close now. But what will she do? Melly, will you first Roll for initiative, and then please oh introduce your character. Ah, uh, cool. Yeah, I'll roll some initiative before I introduce my character. Great. Uh, okay. 14. So, you know, right. pretty middle of the road start, which is great because I don't feel terrified at all. Um, and yes, yeah, so the, the woman leaning against this tree uh, is a half orc with sort of this, uh, you know, deep uh, bluish purple uh, tinted skin, uh, husks which have been filed down uh, pretty small, and her dark hair, which is, you can tell, has been in kind of a lot of impressive looking um, dews, has just been kind of straggled in it. And it 
hasn't been tended to as well as as normal. Uh, she's got a top hat that has a patch uh, that looks pretty recent, and her burgundy tail coat is uh, just smattered with the dirt and the mud of this uh, region that she's in right now. Uh, she's got a cane in hand and a, a case strapped to her back, and she is uh, trembling. She's she's trying to stay as quiet as possible, but she's not great at that. She feels much too large, uh, much too noticeable, and not safe at all. Uh, do I know of anything nearby that that I might think of as safe? Distance. These are woods that you are familiar with, but not an area that you are familiar with. You are off the uh, the beaten path, so to speak. You have been driven deeper and deeper into this wilderness, and this is the moment for Jacqueline. Uh, fight or flight? Uh, definitely flight. I'm running. I'm, I'm just gonna... I'm running for it. <laughs> I'm a scared. As you... As you bolt into the woods, into the darkness, you can feel it chasing after you. It feels close. You can almost feel the heat from its body, just like the heat from its anger, just like pulsing close against your back. Uh, your brain is tricking you into feeling that its hand is just so close, so close to grabbing that hat, to grabbing the articles of clothing, and grabbing that jacket and pulling you to a stop. Uh, I, oh, I just kind of hearing this this growling coming from behind and realizing that I I don't think I can outrun this. I'm not uh, I'm not really built for this. I'm a I'm a noble woman. Uh, I'm going to just kind of get that that tone in my mind of that growl and then hum something that is just dissonant from it that just kind of makes this awful uh, harmonic sound, or disharmonic sound, I guess, and cast a dissonant whispers to maybe make it D leave me alone and go away. Does this make a wisdom saving throw? Okay, what is the saving throw? 13? I have bad news for Jacqueline. This is the one game where your DM is going to roll well for once. <laughs> Describe to me the sense of terror as you realize that the spell, as even as it passes your lips, is failing you. I, she just crumbles and the, just the, the note falters as just it catches in her throat like she couldn't make another sound. Uh, and she's frozen you know it's not flight or fight anymore it's just freeze and that faltering is just enough you see its eyes flash this jaw hanging loose and limp as it reaches forward i i can i just my last ditch effort i i kind of hold up the cane and the top kind of flies off of it, revealing the rapier inside, and I just want to try to slash across its throat. In that moment, drawing the rapier, something about when, as it's, as it's swinging forward, stops it. Um, I rolled a one. Um, <laughs> the moon glints into the blade, and for just a moment, it hesitates. He hesitates. You feel, you hear this, this growling, this, this, this moaning as the saliva drips from his jaws, this feeling of anger and familiarity from its eyes. Uh, do, so do I know, do I know who this is? Is this my brother or my father or what do you do next oh sorry do do i know who this is is this like my brother my father do i know uh, or is it just kind of vaguely familiar 
you know. You know these woods. You know what happened here. And you know what's chasing you. Cool. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, then I'm... I'm just gonna try to, try to gather myself just in this moment where it has stopped coming after me. And maybe I, I just feel this bit of power coming back to me. I'm, I'm feeling a little empowered. And I'm gonna just stand up to my full height. Usually Jacqueline sort of uh, hunches. But she stands up to her full height. You, you cannot haunt me here. You're dead. I killed you, and I'll do it again, and I'm just going to try to run it through with this rapier. Go ahead and roll. Okay. Oh, 19. You stab into its midsection, and it, the its eyes widen in... in in shock, not so much as in surprise that you would actually attack it, but maybe in, in, in shock that you're reliving something with it again. And as you stab, and as you stab, and as you stab into your pursuer, the stabs slowly start to thud into its body, like, like, like flesh hitting wood, like something just smashing into wood as you, you hear just the, 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 the thuds of the blade, the thuds of the blades, the knock of the blades, the knocking on the door, the pounding on the door. Jacqueline awakes in a small, sparsely furnished room. A wave of laughter can be heard downstairs. Uh, the storyteller must be finishing their story and on cue, there is a knocking, a pounding, rather, at the door. It's the innkeeper reminding Jacqueline that she's, she's up next and that he's tired of having to come find her. Of course, my, my apologies, sir. Be right there. And I will clean myself up as much as possible, the basin, and get my case with the violin. And... You... You hear a laugh as he always does when you're just so polite and upper class with him and you just hear a, eh, save your sirs and just be on time. You hear him walk back down the stairs. And I'm sorry, what were you doing? I gather. Uh, yes, I just kind of cleaned myself as much as possible with like a wash basin. I'm sure I'm just dr drenched in sweat. And I guess I'm just gonna play that off as stage fright, which I never have, but you know, it'll cover for me in this case. And then I will, uh, yeah, uh, head on, head on down with my violin in hand and the uh, the rapier blade that I used to play it with. Amazing. So as you head uh, downstairs, as you get your violin, uh, and you pick up the case. Uh, Something makes you pause for a moment. And for some reason, even though you're very familiar with it now, you found it several days ago. Uh, the note that you found in the violin case just makes you pause just for a moment. And as you head downstairs um, to do your 20, to finish your shift, to earn your bread, to earn your keep, roll performance for me. I would love to. <sighs> Thirteen. I'm a little on edge from that nightmare. I think Jacqueline, I Jacqueline, probably... would you tell me? Uh, yeah, I think I like I, that note that I kind of called out of it. That that growl that I turned into that note. That's what like comes keeps on coming into my head, and that's. It doesn't go with the music that I'm playing. It doesn't really work. And it just darkens it in such a way that, like, at first it's just bad. And then I pick it up enough that it sounds fine, but it's incredibly depressing. And, and nobody wants to really hear that. And it, that's not what they're here for. They're not here to be depressed as I'm just going on this violin and playing all these minor chords. And uh, it just... Nobody's very uh, excited when I finish other than the fact that I'm done and leaving for somebody else to pick up. 
time moves so quickly for you on stage as it so often does when you're performing, when you're playing. And you end the set to silence. Rather stunned, sad silence. Like you've said, a smattering of polite applause, uh, maybe a few people uh, who are sober enough and um, recognize true artistry when they see it. The innkeeper uh, quickly uh, takes the stage and, oh, well, she must be going through something, shouldn't she, mates? Give her a round of applause. Uh, Jacqueline the Jazzy, one more time, one more time, and sort of tries to lift things up and get things uh, back going. And as you trudge back up the stairs, um, the, uh, the human contortionist has taken the stage at this bizarre um, little tavern hole in the wall vaudeville that you found yourself in for the past few days. And when you head back up the stairs, it's still there waiting for you. The note. I read it again like I have, expecting that maybe I'll see something different. And I just but you get don't, hooked do on you? the same. Th no, I just get hooked on the same thing every time. The house. And it seems like the only what answer does the to say? The, every question I have. Uh, yeah, I, I read it again. And my sweetest firstborn and oft unseen. Your raise a Montag if not welcomed as one. The reflection you see marked you as different. And she kind of looks up at that point and like any reflective surface in the room has like been covered by, you know, a sheet or a jacket or something. Um, even like the wash basin when she washed herself, she didn't look in the pool of water to see herself. And while it has made your life difficult, I thank the gods for it. The darkness will come for them, your brothers, your sisters, your stepmother, it will consume them like it consumes me now. My blood is poison. Open my veins and it will burn the floor. Cut my throat and see the truth of your heritage. Our fortress of wealth cannot stop an enemy within. The monster inside of them will take your brothers and sisters. Turn them on each other. But perhaps when it sees what you see in the mirror, it will not recognize my blood. My cursed blood. I have succumbed and left you with nothing and everything. I have succumbed and doomed your brothers and sisters to its claws. They have inherited everything and you, nothing, nothing but the truth. I give you poverty and ruin and it will set you free. I give you my violin that you love so well. Play and think of me as I was watching you at your lessons when I was foolish enough to ignore what was inevitable. I give you a journey with no destination. I give you a chance to outrun the beast. A house. A house is everything. Find us. And with those last two words, find us echoing in the this room of loose old timber, which suddenly for that echo has pristine acoustics. The music downstairs starts to dissolve and turn as we find ourselves in a different inn, a packed, lively place, the smell of salt air stinging the nostrils. Um, it's a lively scene inside the smiling oyster, the smells of roast meats and ex exotic exported and probably smuggled spices mixed with the smell of mead soaked wood furniture and cedar. Uh, piles of cedar everywhere used for uh, in cases when folks couldn't hold their liquor. A play what you can jam session has started on a nervous looking raised stage, which is more just a collection of barrels that haven't yet fallen over from the weight of being danced on by drunken singing sailors all doing their best to play the same sea shanty at somewhat the same time. One of the busiest taverns on these docks, it's a place to find work, find friends, find companions, or just find rum. One rather rough and tumble looking gnome, as alone as one can be in a packed bar, has come for the rum. Amy, will you please int introduce your character? Sitting off uh, in a corner, 
with just uh, a mug the size of her head uh, is uh, an unassuming three and a half foot tall gnome with red brown curls cropped short. Uh, you see a, a green puffy jacket that was never fancy, but was probably a pretty nice sturdy buy maybe 10, 15 years ago. Uh, brown leather pants, uh, functional, simple. Um, and uh, not engaging, but clearly soaking in the atmosphere um, and swaying a little bit to one or the other of the rhythms of the band up on stage um, is, is Rip Scrumble. As Rip sort of sways and listens to the music and loses herself sort of in the crowd and in the noise, um, how much rum has Rip had? Five, six, it's a good night. It's a good night, and in that good night, um, uh, a confusing and almost bewildering sight crosses into Rip's sight line. Four different versions of an old friend, Lazarus Zane, which is troubling because there's only one Lazarus Zane, uh, the quartermaster of a rather infamous ship called the Swimming Mammoth, um, uh, approaches just that, that cocky, confident smile that she always carries, uh, the sway of her hip, um, uh, for hips, the the most uh, outstanding feature on her, of course, is her nose, which has been uh, infamously broken many, many a times. But as she will tell you, you should see the other guy. She leans forward on the bar, gives Rip a bit of a look, smiles after a moment. Well, hey... must be having a good night. Which one abuse you? That would be me. She just sort of casually raises her hand. The one in the middle. Hi, lads. It's good to see you, Rip. How are you doing? You know. How's... Let's see. It's good. It's good. Uh, you know, I don't see you near the docks as often as I used to, and when I do, I don't see you sober. How are you finding things? Better when I'm not sober! Fair enough. Well, if you're interested in taking a break tonight, I've got an offer. I don't think that you're, um... She kind of gives you a once-over, a bit of a sniff. Currently employed. What kind of job? A job on the Mammoth. What other kind of job would I be telling you about? What other kind of job are you cut out for, Rip? Come on, you haven't been on a boat in ages. It's time to get your sea legs back on. You know what? I've got some offers keeping me busy. People always need things moved. A lot of lifting jobs. A lot mm, of- Lifting jobs. Mm. Hey, Rip, it's a nice on. band, isn't it? In the morning. It is. It is. Rip, listen, we, we leave in the morning. I need a quartermaster's assistant. And the job's yours if you want it. Laz, I can't go back. No one blames you what for happened to those people, Rip. Not a one. You telling me it can't happen again? Yeah. 
it'll always happen rip it's it's the ocean it's it's the sea it's it's our master and when it decides to take people under whether it's one or a whole crew it'll decide all the same not yet not yet okay i'll see you in a few months then and we'll see if then is yet she puts a piece of gold on the table, snaps to the bartender, and points at you. Says, her tab. Take care of yourself, Rip. Bye. The journey. Next few hours are um, maybe After a bit of leaves, a haze. And- I want to smash my mug into the wall next to the booth. I the bartender who is the most piratey sounding person that I can come up with makes a very unhappy pirate noise at that. <laughs> Sorry. Another Rip, I don't say this much because I don't value human life. Look at me. But um Methinks you've had enough. Place used to be fun. And start. How about you get home a little bit? Okay. I leave some extra on top of the gold. He just sort of goes like <laughs> and like drags it over. One get yourself road. home safe, Rip. One for the road. And um, he takes this uh, weird little leather pouch that's probably not for liquids, uh, shakes it out just a little bit, pours just like a little bit of rum in there and just hands you um, the world's first to-go cup. (laughs) Any port in it? I'll get into my belt. See you tomorrow. What's Rip do now? I want to walk along the street on the landward side, but towards the edge of the dock. Just walk for a while. Okay. Will you please roll your perception? All right. Well, you know, it's been a good night and it's a nine. <laughs> All nines, baby. Um, as you sort of walk along the dock and sort of let whatever thoughts roll through the mind of a uh, of a gnome that's drunk enough for six gnomes um, pour through your head. You hear um, just the sound of uh, it, it almost sounds like a like a chain sort of dragging behind you. Turn and look. You turn, you whip, you might even overcorrect a little bit. You're not completely uh, all together with it right now, but you don't see anything. Um, I'm going to push it a little. I'm going to cross the street and angle closer to the ocean side. Okay. Um... Uh, where are you sort of trying to end up? I want to walk around towards test- the north end of the dock, which is, I, I think I'm staying at an inn up there. Okay, sounds good. So you are 
uh, heading uh, sort of closer uh, to home, sort of to the, the north end of the, of the dock, you can hear sort of the familiar uh, evening bells of the Night's Watch, um, the familiar sounds of, uh, you know, uh, various crewmen, folks staggering back to their ships, uh, late night cargo uh, loading, that kind of thing. This this life, this this um, this, this sound, this, these surroundings that are so familiar to you and yet, yet not yours. Um, what I'm after anymore. is really the smells. I miss the smells. And they are there. You are in a wall of them. It is like um, being in a fish market that is being housed in a boy's dormitory. Uh, uh, the second week of their freshman year of college. Uh, so yes, the smell of the docks overtakes you. Um, those familiar, familiar scents. And as you are wafting them in, will you please roll your perception a second time? That was the wrong roll, unfortunately, because it was a good roll. Uh, was a good I roll. misclicked. Um, so we're just going to try it again and get the exact same roll. Thank you. Thank you, Dice. Okay. You knew what was up there. Uh, it is a dirty 20. You hear that same sound again, and this time it really strikes you because you just, you, it, it, you've heard it now a second time. It almost seems like it's followed you. Pull my flask out of my belt. Who's there? And as you turn again, sort of staggering, your question is answered. There is a man standing, fairly well dressed. Um, almost seems like he's uh, he's he's wearing uh, servant's uh, livery, but kind of dressed for uh, for travel. Uh, he's a tall man, un sort of oddly tall, even for a, a, a human uh, standing next to a gnome. He is staring at you. Got a problem? And with that, he takes a step forward, a very long seeming step forward, as if he covers quite a bit of ground in one step. Are you Mr. Rip Scrumbo? In a manner of speaking, I'm she. He sort of leans down and kind of looks at you again. I apologize. My vision is not what it was. As he leans forward, you can tell he is a very old looking man with just like wisps of sort of white and gray hair and his his eyes um, have almost this like sort of creamy sheen over them. Uh, they were blue at one point. You can kind of see those under the the, the, the the milk that age has has added um, to the eyes. Ms. Scramble. What of it? I've been instructed by my master to deliver you a message. As he understands it, you are looking for a job. Yes, Ms. Scrumple. Work. Tuck my flask away. What manner of work? He hands you a small, rolled up piece of paper. Should you accept? The details are found within. Good evening, Ms. Scrumble. What do I call you? What I am called is 
not important. You may call me a faithful servant to my master. His signature may be found within the document. Funny way to talk to people, but make all kinds of guess. I'm gonna open it up. As right you now. take a look, as you open the message and take a look, it simply says. Your presence is requested and your assistance desired for a simple, well-paid job. Follow the map, find what you seek, reclaim what you've lost. Our purposes are at a crossroads. Halfrist. What's the name? Sorry? Halfrist. H-A-L-V-H-R-E-S-T. Is the man who gave me, gave it to me still there? No, he is not. Friend, nameless, faithful servant of Halvrist. You have a good bellow. Hey there! In the distance, you hear a drunk pirate yell back, Hey there! Maybe not the response that you saw. Carry on! You too! Where does the map lead? It's, uh, it appears to be, uh, directions out of town and, uh, uh, to the main road are sort of the first, uh, couple of steps. Further inland? Further inland. I do have a couple few tabs I should probably be attending to. Alvarist. So better see. We'll look off the ocean one more time. And get the flask back out and walk home. And as Rip takes a swig and heads home into the night, you hear the bells again of the dock. Uh, informing you that another hour has struck. Oh! Wow! Eli! Eli, look! A, a fossil! Uh, Eli, you're a, a Ozick. You're, you're, you're good. You're, 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 you're newest and bestest friend in Scouts. He, he, he's probably just displaying this new treasure uh, to you. He's just he's smiling. You've never seen him look prouder. This, this shy, shy kid that hasn't spoken to a soul at camp, is now with you in the middle of the woods, just proudly holding this up. What do you think it could be? Oh, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe some sort of like, like a, like a saber-toothed tiger, or, or, or maybe like a, like a giant bird. What if it's a bird that's never been discovered before? I can't even think of what that would be. There's like a million kinds of terrifying birds. Oh, yeah, yeah, but maybe, maybe, oh, maybe this bird has like, has teeth and, 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 and horns. And then when it flies, it flies down and it, it picks up sheep with its horns. And then it flies off with the, she with the sheep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Oh, my dad told me there's a whole island like that full of snake people and giant birds with like claws and like long beaks. I yeah. Think, I think oh. I heard the, they're called uh, uh, Yumtine or, or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't listen to my dad much, but <sighs> I'm so excited that I'm at Kids Have Spirit Camp. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four. Kids Have Spirit. One, you got to do. <laughs> yeah.
yes, he does that with you. Um, and uh, 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 and then kind of like looks around and it's just like, okay. Um, and he kind of like curves around and he looks at the map that you're holding. Uh, you, you, you sure you know where we're going though, right? Or, or we're, we're, we're okay? <laughs> of course. I mean, do you see this badge? Do you see this badge? This is the kids never get lost junior badge. That I, I received that one um, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. You you that's remember? I'm so glad that I'm with you. Yeah, no, that's why I'm so yeah. glad that I'm with you. Ugh. If we find the house though, like we get we 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 we, we get our scout badges. We'll be kings. Yeah. yeah, nobody's ever gotten the junior explorer's badge, but we're gonna be the first. Yeah, definitely. I have a spot for it. Oh. Right here. It's going to go right here. Maybe they'll even give me a second one for the fossil, huh? I'm going to hang on to this. Okay, which way? Uh, let's see. Um, oh, this way. I, I feel like I, I, I... This tree. Yeah. Yeah, you see how this tree looks? I, it looks awfully familiar to me. But, but that means that we're going the right way. Okay. No, sounds good. I'd follow you anywhere, Eli. Lead the way. Okay. Roll a survival check. Eight. <laughs> Two of you walk for, uh, you know, what seems like a half hour. It's just this pleasantly, like, lightly wooded area. You can hear birds in the trees. It's a, it's a beautiful spring day. It, it, there's a nice breeze. It feels pretty good. Um, but you walk for a little while, uh, talking about other kids at the camp and, uh, you know, what you're hoping to do with all of the skills that you're going to learn at this place, uh, how, you know, when you, how, when he grows up, um, uh, Ozik wants to be an adventurer, uh, just like his grandpa was and really just go out and, 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 and see the world and see everything that there is to see. Um, after about a half hour, you guys, your spirits drop a little bit. You find yourselves in front of a river. And while not incredibly wide, it's intense, it's strong. Uh, Low-grade rapids are sweeping through. After a few moments of looking around, you find one way across a... Um, what kids might call a bridge. It's a, it's a series, it's a collection of uh, downed trees and, uh, and branches that can get you most of the way there if you're clever and if you're careful. What would you like to do? I, I, I know this is, this is the right way. Yeah, um, the rift doesn't look too bad. It only rained a couple days ago, I think, so... Yeah, it may be a little cold, but don't you worry. Um, let's see here. Uh, and I'm going to start looking around to see if I can find anything that would help me sort of like bridge this gap a little bit. Okay, cool. Uh, roll a nature check. Say 16. Okay, uh, so um, uh, you guys spend a little bit of time uh, uh, looking around. You give uh, Ozik um, some directions on the kinds of things that he should be looking for. You know, some sort of like thicker sticks that maybe have a little, uh, not dry stuff, living stuff that has a little bend to it that can support weight and things like that a little bit. Uh, you guys uh, spend uh, just a little bit of time and um, you manage to uh, sort of... Uh, lash together uh, a pretty strong uh, uh, woven sort of uh, we'll, we'll call it almost like rope that you've you've woven this piece into that you're really feeling like if uh, if you can get it across some of the gaps you'll be able to actually use it and it'll hold your weight uh, to cross over the uh, to cross over this fast moving river great um, I think I'll go first and, and you follow close behind okay Okay, got yeah, 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 got it. And uh, you can tell uh, Ozek is scared. He doesn't want you to see it, but the, the color is kind of drained out of his face, and he's he's even as he's saying yeah, 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 yeah. He's not looking at you. He's looking directly at the river. 
All right. Um, I'm going to try and walk across. Um, I, as I kind of get ready, I kind of dust myself off. Uh, my my uniform is is well kept, but for whatever reason, there are stains on it that I simply just can't explain. Like it's just it's always dirty, it's always filthy, and it drives me insane. So just like, okay, all right, here we go. And I'm gonna just confidently step onto this little makeshift bridge. Okay, will you um, roll in? Uh, let's see here. Will you please roll um, an, a straight dexterity check for me? Ten total. Okay. And um, just as a side note, I apologize if you guys can hear the uh, aggressive car horn outside. It's one of the joys of living on a main road in Los Angeles. Uh, really sets the mood. Um, it's just okay, part of uh, this domain of dread is just yeah. permanent car horns. <laughs> Traffic. Always in the background. Um, yes. The Dark Lord is the Californian sketch from SNL where you just talk about how you got to places. Okay. Sorry. 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 Um, <laughs> Eli. Okay. You rolled a 10. Okay. Uh, uh, what does Eli start doing to sort of start trying to cross this um, this collection of sticks and branches? Um, he's going to try and find the most direct path. So as soon as I step up, my hands go up, and he's just kind of like, and then I'm just going to like reach like a branch that's like in my way. I'm just going to hop over it. As you hop, you come down, okay, and maintain your balance, but you do jerk forward just a little bit as the this entire sort of ramshackle structure starts to shake under you. There's a moment your eyes go wide and you're for, you're positive that you're done, but you're not. You keep moving a little bit. You hear Ozak on the other side of the river. Eli, you good? Are you okay? Yeah, it's it's gonna hold. We. We, we did a good job. We're going to make it. Okay. We're going to continue forward. Um, I do want to take a moment to just kind of check the river, see if there's any fish in there. Just, you know. Um, you, okay, cool. Yeah, you take, you take a moment. Um, sure, roll a perception check for me. Eleven. Okay, you do actually see um, some fish actually moving with the current. It's hard with all the foam uh, from the water and how fast it's moving to really get a good idea of, uh, of what kind of fish they are. Eli, you know, is usually pretty quick with species and, and, and types, but uh, it, it's, it's kind of hard to, to get a, a visual. Hey, when we get, our, when we get our, ba our badges, we should come back and do some fishing. Oh, okay. Just be careful. It's fine. Don't worry. And I'm going to continue. Okay. Uh, give me uh, one more dexterity check. Nine. <laughs> continue. <laughs> I continue along. Uh, it seems to be holding okay. A little shaky in this part. It's okay. Don't worry. A piece Why breaks off I... under you, and you find yourself, <laughs> uh, just in a moment, uh, you find yourself hanging onto um, your legs sort of like pulled up across your chest. You find yourself hanging onto one of the thicker branches uh, connected to the river. Um, a moment goes by. You're able to pull yourself up to safety and crawl very carefully to the other side of the river. Should I go? Watch out for that. Watch out for, just watch out for that one part. It's okay though. I'm gonna get up all soaking wet and I'm gonna stand at the edge of the river and I'm hold my hands out. Like, just once you get to that part, just, just make a jump, okay? I'll be able to catch you. Ozak steps onto 
this ramshackle sort of uh, bridge. How you doing, Nozak? Let's roll for you, buddy. He does his best. He's he's not the scout necessarily that Eli is, as he very carefully makes his way uh, sort of across the bridge. And as he puts his foot down on that first wobbly sort of in, uh, insecure spot that Eli discovered, we cut. Eli. You're walking along the path uh, that you found just a little after the river. It's evening, the sun is setting, it's drizzling a little bit. You're clutching your map, you're walking forward, positive that this is the way to the house. Jacqueline. You may, you settled up with the innkeeper, thanked him for his hospitality, and following the map on your father's letter, set out on the road winding through the forest outside of town and eventually what was familiar leads to a disused trail overgrown by weeds in the woods of spindly trees a drizzle falling as you travel rip inland Inland is where safety is. Inland is where a job is. And as the rain starts to fall, you approach a wooded crossroads. And as the rain begins to pick up, it makes the cloaked form to all three of you. It makes the cloaked form standing at the crossroads seem all the more unreal. Each of you sees this cloaked figure standing. And while you can't see its face and it makes no sudden movements, you feel like it's standing there waiting for you. Jacqueline, what would you like to do? Uh, pardon me. Um, excuse me. Um, I'm looking for the House of Halverest. You wouldn't perhaps um, be familiar? Rip, what would you like to do? Did I hear anything, or is it just me and the figure? Just you and the figure. Halverest? Is that you? Eli. Eli, what would you like to do? Um, are, are you are you going to take me? Are you going to take me to, to, to get my badge? The figure's head snaps up, glaring with piercing yellow eyes. What you took for a cloak spreads around it, revealing itself to be a pair of mighty black wings. With one powerful motion and a blast of chill air, the, the air just pushing past the three of you. Uh, Eli, maybe even pushing you back a foot or two. The wings sweep, and the vague, strange figure at the crossroads is gone. Leaving the three of you from your diverging paths leading to the crossroads to see each other for the first time. Good day. And I, I, is there a sign at this crossroads? 
No. Um, so uh, there are the three sort of paths um, leading forward. And then um, one... Sorry, I'm DMing and solving a technical issue at the same time. Uh, and then one path uh, moving forward that it seems like the um, this figure uh, was standing in front of. Uh, also, Eli, how old do you look? Just to establish, look like, a, like a like a, I, I probably I'm a little under five feet tall, and um, I'm about like a teenager, maybe like twelve or so. So, you know, fresh faced. Okay. Uh, I. Well, neither of you look like Halfrith. Did anybody uh, just see a figure with dark like, wings? Yeah, like a bat. An omen. An omen, An most omen. likely. What? Uh, Kid, what are you doing out yes. in the rain? Oh, I'm I'm going for my explorer's badge. Are you alone? Are you a counselor? A what? A, a counselor. From from the camp, they they sent us through through the woods, um, uh, and uh, to to go get our explorers badge. They sent you into that the was... woods alone. Oh, well, well, I had a friend, um, but he he got he got lost. We we kind of split up, I guess. Oh, do you? You need help finding your friend. It's not safe out here. Oh no, it's all part of the test. We're, we're supposed to be going through the woods, and it's supposed to be a little spooky, I guess. But that's how, that's how we earn our Junior Explorer's badge. Kids have spirit. Yes, we do. That's that's you know the saying. Oh. Does any of that sound familiar well, at all? Um... Um, you guys, uh, uh, you know what, you might have even heard, like, people making fun of this stuff in, like, sort of the, uh, in the circles that you run in. Uh, uh noble families, rich families send their kids off to, to stuff like this all the time. The, the rich families in, like, Baldur's Gate, uh, you know, they send their kids off to these kind of camps, um, you know, all, all the time. And, uh, you know, maybe even, uh, uh. You, you know, you might have sailed with someone who, like, taught rowing at one of these and was just like, you know, I made a few gold and I stole a few gold off the kids, too, if you take my meaning. Uh, which I hope you would, because that was a very clear thing that I just said and wasn't clever at all. Um, I am great uh, at picking up hints. Hey! Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so you, you're kind of like, oh, one of these kids. Right. So I look at the kid and I look at Jacqueline's outfit and I was like, you don't either. You look like you should be wandering through the rain. Look, I'm supposed to meet someone near here. They might be able to let you stand inside for a bit. Where are you headed? Oh, meet Halfrist for a job. Well, then perhaps we just ought to travel together anyways, as that is where I am going to as well. And you, um, apologies, uh, I forget myself. Uh, my name is, um, Jacqueline Montag, um, of the Montag, uh, Marble family. Um, it is a pleasure to meet you all. Yeah, uh, I try to do a little bow. Rip scrumble <laughs> of the nobodies. Pleased to meet you. It would be my honor to escort you, too. Um, I'm Eli, in case you didn't catch my name. Or maybe I didn't say it out loud. Sometimes I forget things, but no biggie. Um, hey, you're a gnome, right? Very observant. i will be giving you new badges any time now. <laughs> you kind of smell bad, though. So could you kind of stand over there a little bit? I lean in. I will just... Oh, gross. 
You gotta learn about yeah. nature sometime, uh, kid. Rip on the shoulder with my. You're gonna do what? Sorry. Uh, I uh, I reach over and tap. Uh, rip on the shoulder with my cane and cast pressed vegetation, clean you up. <laughs> Between the rain and whatever that. that is. Hmm? Were you hired to clean? What kind of job are we going to? I'm not going to any job, um, but happy to travel with you. And Eli, you're also going to Halvos House? Or where are you supposed to be going to meet your counselors? Eli, you would recognize no, the name on the map. Yeah, uh, it's it's right here, actually. See, um, I was going around southwest this way, and then the house is, is right around here. Does that match the wrong. map? That I have? Uh, you're looking at the one Eli is showing, and you're kind of like, because eh. it doesn't. But as you uh, take a look at the um, the employment summons uh, that you received, it does. I know I was a couple sheets into the wind last night, but it was... Look at his. Look at mine. I look at his. Look, you let me that's lead the way, and we're not going to get lost, okay? That's that's what this badge is for. Do you guys know about the badges? Can't say as I do. Perhaps you can tell us about them as we continue on. I would like to get out of the rain sooner than later. Oh, yeah. sure. And then I'm going to regale them with how I got my different badges. As we so, go. as as the group uh, heads uh, down the path, um, the rain, the, the the it's more of just this obnoxious, consistent drizzle uh, than anything else. Um, uh, the, this, this cold, wet feeling on your skin that won't seem to kind of leave, no matter how like hold how tightly you hold your arms and as Eli um, is uh, uh, regaling you um, with the tales of uh, when he earned his knot tying badge um, uh, which was I'm a crazy story I'm actually interested in the knot tying story yet. That, that rip perks up for the knot tying story <laughs> oh well in that case Eli uh, tell us a little bit about the knot tying story show, uh, oh, sure. show, uh, show rip a few knots Sure. Um, well, I don't have any rope on me at the moment. Uh, well, at least, I mean, I do, but I shouldn't take it out right now. It's, my pack is perfectly bundled up right now, and I it, I don't want to undo it unless, you know, we absolutely need it. It's, it's Scout's responsibility to make sure that they, that they know when they need to take out their equipment and use it. So anyway, about the Good nuts. policy. So, I fish out some rope. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. So this this is called uh, the the double queen's uh, notch spinner knot. Is it good? Is there a knot? Rip, I'll leave it to you. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll leave it to a Rip's uh, sailor knowledge um, to to judge uh, judge the quality of this knot. I just want to know, like, I mean, I I will know whether it was a, a good knot or it wasn't, but Eli, like, is it a good knot? Can I roll a sleight of hand for it? Sure. Let's see how good this knot is. That's a 22. That is a perfect knot. It's a really good <laughs> knot. Rip is sincerely <laughs> impressed. Kid, this ain't bad. When you're dangling from a crow's nest and circling around, this is all that stands between you and... And something crosses her face. You'd be glad to have a knot like this. You got and potential. Thanks. As that memory sort of flashes through you, Rip, you remember the jolt of that storm and you remember two good friends 
going over the side. Will you remind us what happened in that moment? Lightning hit the mast while we were up there. And Dirk and Maga, Magda went flying in opposite directions. And I caught a rope on my way down. And then everything was water and fire at the same time. A flash of lightning brings you back to reality. As the sky lights up a little bit around you thunder rolling in the distance a moment later. And from the forest around you, you hear a voice. Rip. Rip. Who's... Who's there? The three of you sort of stop as Rip defiantly calls back to the forest. And you just hear again. Rip. Uh, Rip, are you quite all right? Yeah. Some jokers in the woods. I'm here about the job! And though the two of you couldn't hear that, all three of you see the bones of what were Dart and Magda pulling themselves through the tree line. And as these two skeletons come into view, we all need to roll initiative. Oh my god. Got a 21. Oh That's a 21 for Jacqueline? Yeah. <laughs> that was a 4 for Eli. And an 8. And an 8 for Rip Scrumble. Jacqueline. Start us off. Uh... Great. Um, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of bones crawling at me. That's just a thing that is a, a thing about Jacqueline. She's going to uh, kind of just slide the uh, the case off her shoulder. It clips open with one kind of movement, pulls the uh, violin out, just kind of tosses the cane to the sides at the top, just slides off, and just kind of looking at them and kind of... It, finding the resonance between their bones just begins to kind of just play a chord that reverberates through them and uh, casting a Bane spell on them if they can make a charisma saving throw. Let's find out if they can. What do they need to hit? 13. Neither of them save. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they... um, uh, they subtract a d4 from every attack roll and saving throw they make, as long as I maintain okay. concentration for two minutes. From every saving throw they uh, make, okay. And attack roll. <laughs> and attack. Ooh, uh, and attack roll. It's very. So Jacqueline, good. Is, See, I'm just like Jacqueline's playing the song. Yeah, I'm playing the song, and it it like the sounds of it, like the notes, just kind of like chink off their bones and like echo through the hollows of their ribs. Uh, in a way that is just not very pleasant for them. So two unexpected things have happened. Um, Well, a lot of unexpected things have happened tonight, but in the past moment, two and first the skeletons and then uh, this Jacqueline, this this well-dressed half-orc, not pulling a sword, um, you know, not pulling a a wizard staff, uh, drawing a violin. (laughs) Sort of pulling a sword. Um, and uh, res- responding uh, to this attack with music, uh, one of the skeletons uh, shambles forward uh, towards Jacqueline, who's, uh, well, no, uh, past Jacqueline, towards Rip. They seem to really 
really have eyes uh, for Rip. Uh, and as it just sort of like loosely swings uh, its arm. Uh, and uh, we are subtracting um, uh, uh, 1d4, Jacqueline, from to hit rolls. Yeah. Do you want me to roll that or do you want to roll that? I can roll it. Um, it uh, So, you know, skeletons built for fear, not really built for combat. This thing sort of like is just shambling forward, like loosely swinging um, this arm. And by this thing, I mean Magda, um, your friend, your crewmate, your doom. What? It takes its swing. How? It misses, and that brings us to Rip. You're dead and drowned! I'm gonna, uh, I would like, please, to rage. Mm. And then I would like, like, uh, and then I would like to please, uh, swing my great axe around at her! And ideally, crush in the face of my best friend. Roll to hit. Um, that was a 17. 17 absolutely hits. Uh, roll. All that ragey damage. Mm-hmm. And... It is gonna... Woo! Uh, we got some max damage. Uh, plus two, plus two for the rage, I believe. For a 16? Holy! I want to swing boy. it over and come down between the the head and the shoulder. Hmm? Rip Scrumble, please describe the second time that you've watched Magda die. The strangest thing is that the flesh falling off of her bones and the tattered remains of her outfit seem altered, but somehow the eyes look exactly the same and there is the same sense of surprise that was the last thing i saw from her as she went away from me into the storm and i never saw her again is what i see on her face as the axe is coming down as for the second time i'm about to watch her leave my life forever that moment hangs in the air, but you don't really have much time uh, to sit with it as she's very quickly replaced by Dart, uh, who swings a short sword, uh, this flash of metal, and you see those same eyes uh, as the sword swings forward. A seven. Well, no, hang on. One moment. Let's see how bad that gets. It might gets. be even worse. It might be even worse. Um, a five. Does a five hit, Rip Scrumble? <laughs> Does not. Uh, it, uh, it, it sort of like slashes forward. You're able to very, very easily uh, sidestep and avoid it, finding your, uh, your deck legs from the number of times you've boarded ships or been boarded and found yourself defending your own. Um, You're dead and drowned, us- you are! And yet, he doesn't seem to believe you. And that brings us to Eli. Is this uh, creature standing next to me, or do I have some distance from it? You have like a little bit of distance. Okay. I'm going to pull out, I have all sorts of little pouches and pockets. I will pull out a sling from one of my pockets, and I will mutter some arcane words. And I will begin to... Swing my sling, and then I'll launch it, and I'll cast Eldritch Blast at him. All right, let's roll it. Does a 10 hit? Ten does not hit. Uh, there's a this flash of green energy. Uh, uh, if, a, if a bird would be flying over the woods, there's this flash of green Eldritch energy in the woods, but it goes uh, just shy um of the skeleton ah it was so close if he had some flesh on those bones of his i bet i would hit him that's all i'm gonna do 
All right, that brings us around to Jacqueline. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that I'm going to uh, still just continuing to play uh, this, just moving towards uh, Rip to get behind and, and get into uh, kind of a flank with Rip. And then just as I pull down on one note, I will like let that note kind of resonate and then push forward with the rapier to just kind of like get to like the base of the you know spine or the top of the spine i guess would be at the neck to try and uh you know knock some vertebra out and i'm gonna roll that and it's 17 17 hits roll damage already it's gonna be five damage um so again just Gracefully, uh, Jacqueline uh, sort of moves forward, and again, like uh, the rapier, sort of moving down the bow, the violin stabbing into the skeleton's neck. Uh, it's definitely enough for it to sort of turn uh, towards you, and its its eyes sort of uh, flash uh, angrily, uh, but it's still standing. Uh, and then I I just kind of get get the get it back just in time to just kind of bow another note and then i look rip in the eyes kind of looking down at her uh, and i say they're not real you have to remember they're already dead and i'll give you a bardic inspiration which is uh a d6 i i look up in appreciation it's a trick i've never seen with a fiddle now file in Sure. And as you are duly corrected, it's your turn again. Hey. All right. Not real. Not real. And you're not my Dirk! I'm gonna try to get him again with the great axe. Roll to hit. Um, and then add... Whoa! Uh... Well, it is a 23 plus 1d6, yeah? What if I was like, nope. Uh, yes, that hits. <laughs> <laughs> Roll damage. Uh... Ooh, ooh, it is a good day for the, the axe. Uh, we are at 9 plus 2 plus 2. 11, 12, 13 points of damage, please. <sighs> Other side this time. Rip, will you describe the second time that you've watched Dirk die? The thing about Dirk was that sense of humor. Uh, and I like to think that on some level he'd want to know a fiddle player took him out. Um, as I look around at my new companions and swing the axe from the left and go clean through the middle of Dirk uh, and watch him collapse into a pile of bones um, that make their own little horrifying musical tingle as they land in a heap. There's a moment it's as a Dirk... <laughs> There's a moment as Dirk stands there not realizing quite yet what has happened, maybe. And those eyes just hang in the air even as the bones start to fall apart with that the, 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 the plinking of that sound and the eyes hanging there. The three of you hear Dirk's last words to Rip. Drown with us. The bones fall to the ground. I want to just start keep pounding the the piles of bones. I'm I'm just trying to break each individual piece of them. Of course. Rip. Um. Uh. They're they're there. Um. They only have the power that you give them. You can you can rise above it. Yes. Oh, just I don't know what you're talking the about. I didn't give them permission to wander out of the woods out of their own gr What kind That can't be it. Did you all hear him talking like that? 
perhaps? I'm going to walk up to the pile of bones and just pick up a finger and inspect it. This is so gross. It's... Not sure you should be touching you... that. Yes, you definitely should not be. I have others, though. Can I keep it? I'm sorry, you have other fingers. I have other bones. We've all got one have... That's actually... Oh, I found a vertebrae once. It was pretty cool. I don't know what it was about. Um, but I'd like to know where it came from. I'm sorry, I... You said well, that, that one these came things from... are your You don't understand. Is breath? Is My friends died at from... sea. Well, yeah, I mean, of, of course these aren't your friends. Your friends wouldn't do that to each other. These were just gross things that were pretending. They were just trying to hurt your feelings, that's all. Eli, as you um, uh, very unsettled are by the sort of crouched kid. down, yeah, insightful <laughs> kid, very unsettling. Um, always are. It's a rule. Um, uh, it's science. Uh, but Eli, as you're sort of crouched and holding his finger and and reassuring Rip, uh, you notice a glint uh, in the pile. Something catches your eye. Just drop the finger. Um, and just, just try and get a good look at it before I. No, I'll just reach for it. I'm just going to go for the <laughs> little glint. Great. Sort of as you sort of uh, reach forward, you pull this this piece of um, almost like smoothed wood out of the pile. And as it gets pulled, as it disturbs the pile of bones, the, the bone dust and little pieces of finger and rib um, fall away. Uh, and you, you find... Uh, holding this this oddly shaped uh, piece of wood and below it, three black feathers. Huh. I'm going to grab the feathers as well and just, I want to hold these things in my hands like that's so weird. What does, uh, does the wood shape like, does it look like anything that maybe I would recognize? It's um, or... uh, polished black. Um, it is uh, almost uh, triangle shaped, but rounded. Um, it's a it's a planchette, but I am realizing uh, above game that I don't have a good way of describing the shape of a planchette in my head. <laughs> it's a, a planchette shaped shape. Yes, uh, but uh, one of you, you know, whether, uh, you know, uh, sailors and pirates F with fortune tellers a lot or on the vaudeville tour, you know, someone does spirit boards as parlor tricks. Uh, one of you might recognize uh, what this is. That's certainly strange. What is it? Do you want it? I, I don't think so. No, not having come out of animated bones. No. I um, often thought them parlor tricks. Um, that with a board of some kind could possibly summon spirits. I don't know how much we want to summon spirits, though. So. That would be so cool. We just saw skeletons of dead friends come and attack um, Rip here. You think that, that it would be cool to bring others? Well, really? I was, it was no just need. a suggestion. There's enough bad luck floating around in the world without going and inviting more. We really ought to just continue on, and I'm just gonna, you know, flip the tails out. I get my violin back in its case. I get the end of my my cane, and I press to digitate myself so I'm cleaner. 
and I will just start walking. Could I identify these black feathers? Yeah, roll a nature check for me. Ten? Uh, they are, uh, you're a little confused because you're, you're fairly sure that they're raven feathers, but they're way too big to be raven feathers. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, oh, I, I know what these are for. Um, Ozik, Ozik found, found them. I think he found a bone for one of these. Well, that doesn't make very much sense. It's been a while since he found that bone. Um, hmm. I'm gonna, I, I'd like to pocket the feathers. Yeah? What kind of bone? What, what, what do you see in there? Um, well, the feathers, they're bird feathers um uh, bigger than your typical raven i guess so maybe a really big raven or it's a new type of raven something that we haven't discovered yet my, my friend osik he found he found some bones or some fossils before um we weren't sure what they were for but maybe they were maybe they were for this bird but the timing doesn't work my friend Laz used to run jobs taking folks like you looking for new kinds of birds and creatures <laughs> uh the two of you notice that Jacqueline has just been like hoofing it forward let's catch up okay i'm gonna wait a moment before uh rip turns around and i'm gonna sneak the finger into a pocket amazing um you you sweep the as you're like pocketing the finger. You notice that the the rain has actually uh, subsided, and the three of you can actually see uh, in the distance uh, a, a light breaking through uh, the darkness of the forest and the road ahead. What's up? There? Take that as a positive sign that perhaps we finally reached the house. Uh, Come on, pick it up. I'm gonna speed it up. Get moving. You heard Her Majesty. <laughs> I'll follow along at a, a slow jog. <laughs> Just catching up. So the three of you uh, ahead a little further down the path, and then gradually uh, the, the haze of, of the forest and um, uh, the, the brush and sort of thickness of the foliage around you give way, uh, revealing uh, this uh, cons- noticeably considering um, just the level of intensity of, of the tree line, uh, this noticeably bald hilltop. At the top of the hill, an unexpected sight of a grim, simple, single black tower. The last defiant turret of a long, crumbled fortress. Attached to this tower is a three-story manor house, weather-beaten and veined with ivy. Nature has reclaimed it uh, long ago. A porch girds the house, its sagging roof, sheltering a stout front door that stands open and emits a flickering light. In front of the house, there's a horse-drawn carriage. Uh, The three of you can see from where you are, there's a young man uh, uh, standing by uh, the horse, kind of checking in with it, uh, giving it a pat, brushing its mane a little bit. Uh, around the carriage, there are a couple of crates and uh, and boxes and a barrel. Stable boy, I'm just going to call up as <laughs> a, a decent volume up the hill. Uh, as you call out, he definitely sort of looks down and, and sort of peers through the darkness for a minute and uh, finally kind of smiles. Uh, uh, his expression uh, brightens and he waves and says, Oh, hello, good evening. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're, you're right on time. You're, you're, you're all right on time. And he 
sort of hurries down as if he's trying to meet you halfway. I look at us, I look at Eli. All of us? All of you, all of you. Uh, uh, hi, hello, welcome. <laughs> welcome uh, to, uh, well, the house, <laughs> I suppose. Um, uh, welcome to Hal the house Hurst. of Halfrist. Exactly, exactly, welcome. Um, uh, I, I, I'm so pleased uh, that the that the three of you are here. Uh, we were expecting independent contractors to be uh, to be assisting in our investigation. Um, uh, uh, excuse me, where, where are my manners? Uh, uh, Erasmus, Erasmus van Richten. Uh, pleasure. Uh, you must uh, be uh, Miss. Uh, name ring a bell for us. Oh, sorry. Um. Uh, would you please, Jacqueline? Um. Mm-hmm. Uh, roll a, a roll of, yeah, roll a, a, a lore check for me. Wow. Lola a history? Lore check. A hi- yeah, a history. Whole of uh, history check. 13. Uh, you perk up enough to recognize the name. Um, uh, you, you, you've heard so, uh, the Van Richten name sort of spoken uh, in, in, you know, at dinner parties and things like that, always kind of with like a, you know, sort of an air of uh, scandal. And uh, can you believe what the pores are doing this time? <laughs> I feel at least like maybe a stable boy was incorrect since I've heard the name before. I probably wouldn't have heard of a stable boy. So I feel a little uh, abashed. Uh, apologies. Um, Independent contractors, though, I'm, I'm actually here um, on a personal inquiry. But um, you, s- what were you expecting us for? What what work did you need done? Well, you are uh, you're. Uh, he kind of uh, smiles through all through all of that, as if uh, you know this isn't the first time you know a, a rich young lady has called him a uh, stable boy. Um, <laughs> he's he's a you know a a, a, a pretty like um, frustratingly handsome kid. Uh, you know the that that kid at high school where you're just like you didn't have to do anything to work, you jerk. <laughs> um, you know he's that guy, um, and he sort of just like flashes this like uh, just sort of charming kind of crooked smile and uh, and just says, "And well, you must be uh, 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 Miss Montag, yes." Uh, Montag, um, but yes. Montag, ah, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The the, the accent sometimes, and uh, accompanying you, uh, I, I I would uh, assume I, I have the pleasure of uh, Miss Scrumble and uh, and young Eli. That's me. You hired a kid. He found his way here on his own, didn't he? Don't worry. It's all part of the test. Well, Please, um, Van Richten, could you elucidate us on what is going on? Well, uh, uh, my, my father could probably do a, a, a better job of it. He's actually in the house. Um, uh, please, if, if the three of you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, I hate to put you all uh, directly into work, but uh, we have I have a few things that I need to load uh, into the parlor. And he sort of gestures and starts heading back up the hill towards the carriage. Eli, Time you look carrying. strong. Come on. Okay. I. Uh, yeah. When when I go up, I'm definitely just um. Walking past and into the house. Amazing. Um. Uh. <laughs> uh. Rip, Eli, you see, sort of, you know, just a couple of crates, uh, you know, just filled with uh, provisions, um, some camping equipment. Eli, you would recognize all of this stuff. There's there's uh there's some sleeping rolls. Um, uh, uh, food, some some basic uh, cooking equipment, you know that kind of thing. Um, and uh, same with uh, with whatever it is you're sort of uh, getting ready uh, to lift, Rip. Um, Aramis heads back over uh, to the horse and just uh, waves you guys on and just says, "I'll be in as soon as uh, as soon as we're good here." And I've and I've tied her up. And your dad is Halvrist? Oh, 
No, 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 no. Uh, my my dad is Van Richten. This is the this is the house of Halvorst. He'll he'll fill you in. And he kind of just like returns sort of to the horse and is uh, working on um, uh, uh, unbridling the horse and sort of disconnecting all its various uh, uh, you know connections from uh, from the carriage. I'm carrying a stack of things significantly taller than my head. All right, well, carry it into whoever's house this is. Great. So um, uh, the two of you are gathering up stuff. Jacqueline, you would be um, the first person you step onto the porch, and man, it just feels creaky and precarious, and oh. just uh, this this shiver almost uh, involuntarily forces its way. Um, through your body as you stand in front of the door. Uh, I, I, I pause for a second. I also try to just, uh, I remind myself, you know, think light thoughts, think human thoughts um, as, you know, uh, growing up as the only half work of the family, I uh, have, you know, some, some dislike of the fact that things can creak under me that might not creak under others. And I try to just kind of go up on my tiptoes a bit as I um, and try to get into the house and see if there's a servant to, to take my hat and and cape. Well, you certainly don't find that. You find yourself sort of in a, a very large uh, open room. Uh, there's a staircase in the back going up to the second floor. Um, and a very sort of large, uh, uh, very sort of jarring, it almost gives you a start as you look at it, this um, almost reaching up to the second floor, this, uh, this statue of like this very like slender gargoyle, just like staring uh, back down at you to greet guests that enter the house. That's... And immediately off to your right, you hear uh, movement uh, in the next room, and it looks like there's sort of some flickering um, lantern light. Uh, is there any place to, like, hang things up, or no? Uh, you can tell where there used to be places to hang things up. Actually, you know, there is a um, sort of this very, like, sort of dilapidated, precarious um, coat rack. Yeah, I'll, I'll you know, take my, my things off and... and then head towards the room that has people in it. As you step away, there's a smash behind you. I decide to ignore it as if it didn't happen. You hear a voice from uh, uh, the, the, the room, the, 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 this lit room. Who's there? Uh, pardon me, my name is uh, Jack, uh, Jacqueline Montag. Um, the boy outside said that you were expecting me. As you enter the room, um, you enter a, a, a room that you'd be fairly uh, familiar with. It's a, it's a very well-to-do, rich parlor. It's, you know, a few hundred years older than you would be used to um, to meeting visitors in. Uh, but in its day, uh, it was clearly a very uh, splendid room. Um, there is a man standing in the parlor. Um, throughout the area, uh, it looks like someone has, has almost been setting up like a base camp um, in uh, this parlor. Uh, uh, Rip, Eli, are the two of you um, heading in? What are you guys doing? Yes, uh, Eli would have, carrying things, taken a moment before getting onto the porch to just kind of stop and look back down the road uh, for Ozick uh, expectantly um, before he would turn to Rip and be like, I've been to a house like this before, you know? Plenty of times, actually. Yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice, fancy place. Yeah. The, the, the Frankels, um, just down the road from where we live, they had a place like this. and Just like a porch, 
I, I mean, the, the porch just like this, and oh boy, it's just of this beautiful door, just the finest door. My mom used to be so jealous of it. Let's get you inside, and they can give you something to eat and sort out this job business. At least you won't get rained on anymore. Yeah. All right. Now we'll head inside. As the two of you enter the parlor and join uh, Jacqueline, uh, the three of you find yourself in the presence of this um, of this Van Richten. Um, uh, a powerful man is the the first sort of uh, descriptor uh, that hits your brain, uh, and an elderly man, but it does not seem to have uh, have stopped him uh, one bit or slowed him down at all. Um, He's uh, somewhat of a, a receding hairline, but this sort of like flowing um, white hair falls to his shoulders with these like streaks of, uh, of black hair that seem to be uh, uh, battling eternally, you know, holding out one last hope um, against age. Uh, he wears this sort of heavy leather, um, high collared, very structured uh, coat that almost uh, sits around him. I mean, it, it, it seems like it would be uh, right at home at a fancy dinner party or in the thick of a battle. He holds a cane um, and wears these uh, aged uh, traveler's boots uh, and looks at the three of you very sort of uh, um, uh, not not confused uh, or, or frustrated, more just like um, he, he gives you the air of, uh, of, of, of three executive assistants that for some reason, haven't left the office yet. There are three of you. May I help you? Yeah. Um, I'm with Kids with Spirit. Kids have Spirit. Uh, the Scout Group. Just a couple of days uh, southeast, north, northeast of here. Um, I ran into to Rip here and Jacqueline. Um, and, well, I'm here to help out any way I can. Um, to, and uh, he's just, uh, Eli's just kind of like touching the spot where his new badge is going to go. He's like, uh, anything that you need from me, I can, I can be of service. Very well, young Eli. The two of you. Well, um, actually, I'd like to inquire, Mr. Van Richten, are you the owner of this house? I am not. The owners I would... vanished some time ago, Miss Montag. I am here to determine their fate and possibly, if given the opportunity, prevent it from happening again. I want to dig out my letter. You want to tell me who sent me this? Point to the signature. Here. Yeah. He holds out a hand, sort of expectantly. And now uh, a gnome and an old man are locked in a battle of wills as to who's going to cross the parlor floor first. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Eli, would you please? Uh, um, I'll take the, the letter and just run it over. <laughs> you don't want for me, kid! You don't work for anyone! What? Hey! Hey! I just turn and I... He gives um, the letter sort of a, a quick reading. It's, it's hard to read sort of anything um, in his eyes. There's no kind of reaction. Um, he simply says, interesting. Well, Miss... He kind of looks back down at the letter and looks back up. Scrumble. Are you interested in taking the job? I suppose I am. But who exactly Very is well. asking? My name is Rudolph Van Richten. as if the name speaks for itself. 
investigator of the paranormal. I hold my reflexive skepticism and then I sort of briefly recall outside and the mask slips a little bit. And what of you, Miss Montag, was it? Yes, I'm actually just here on personal business. I don't plan to be doing any work for any um, one, Van Richten or otherwise, but um, if you are not the owner of this place and the deed is not um, currently uh, in the hands of anyone else, I will perhaps take the opportunity to look around. Um, I will try not to get in your way and I hope the same from you. If a man like this could look amused, he almost does it. And as he um, uh, sits down in one of the chairs of the parlor, um, personal business, he takes a moment and glances at Eli and just says, you can put that down in that corner. The letter? Well, oh, sorry, the uh, the whatever he's holding. Um, oh, I left, it out. I left it out. I left it out. But nobody's. I just. Yeah, I didn't, sorry, go, I didn't, and, uh, go and grab it. No, oh, stay okay. here. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I'll go get it. I'll go get it. No, I'm so. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Mr. Richton. I'll go get it. No. it just runs over. <laughs> kind of watch. Make sure Eli doesn't wander out well, of the house. Miss I don't know. Montag. The job here involves an exploration of the house, so it seems that your purpose and the purpose of my new employees are connected. Perhaps we can help each other. I suppose that would be agreeable. We can work together. Uh, Rip and Eli have both proven very capable. Have they? Yes. Eli perhaps is a little strange, and Rip perhaps uh, a little angry, but capable. Angry and capable. A combination yes. we could find most valuable. Well, with all this conversation, I seem to remember that I have a horse that needs tending to. That we have left alone in front of the house and sort of rises out of his chair. Uh, excuse me, the Van Richten, we, we still have no idea exactly what kind of uh, job you're expecting my friends here to do or what you're even doing here or anything like that and Perhaps we can deal with that first, and then you can visit Where's the horse? tall, spooky well. fellow that gave me my letter? Hmm. Interesting. Ms. Montag, you stand in the manor home of Halfrist. A family home built and lived in on the foundations of a tragedy for this region, a horror story. Lauren Halfrist built this home around the ruins of this tower, not knowing what they were truly building around and the Halfrists have since vanished. We are here to investigate their whereabouts, to determine their fate, and to solve the puzzle of why locals call this place the House of Lament. 
Now, please, for the night, make yourselves at home. We will begin in the morning. And he leans back and sort of gestures, you know, to the parlor as if this room specifically, find yourself a little corner, make yourself at home. Eli will... Uh, corner, I... <laughs> Eli will immediately start, uh, he'll put down his bag in one corner and start just like pulling things out and kind of organizing things neatly in his own little corner with the bedroll. Used to smaller spaces, but <laughs> a little unusual. You gonna build camp in here with us? Just he is uh, Van Rick Van Richten is sort of just like reading from this tiny book and just like making notes a little bit as if the, the three of you just are not here. Excuse me. Very slowly, just eyebrow goes up first, followed by the eye. Did you want to call a corner? Are there rooms? That's... This room. Apparently the child is the quickest of the three. As for my corner, and he just sort of like casually points behind him. Dibs. <laughs> I I will unhappily find a chair, hopefully one that is cushioned, and bring it to a corner. <clears throat> Actually, I would ask, um, uh, oh my gosh, my brain just spaced. I would ask Michael's character, who my brain just spaced on your name, to Eli. bring a chair to the corner for me. <laughs> Eli, thank oh. you. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to yeah. intercept you... that if I possibly can. Be like, <laughs> he once again does not work for you. And then move a chair. He's happy to yes. do it. Why not give him something to do? We've got to tire him out. He's a child. Want to get any sleep? Yeah, we don't have any arts and crafts that he could be keeping himself busy with. And I, I will start setting up like a bedroll in a chair for you, but grumbling the whole time. Um, so as the group well, settles in, appreciate. sort of around the light of um, the lantern that's sitting in the dilapidated fireplace, um, full of questions three of you fall into an uneasy sleep and as your long rest begins so do the nightmares and that is where we'll end our first episode of our game of House of Lament I love this one so yeah. much this is so fun oh, such man. a good adventure yeah this is so 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 fun I uh, uh, thank the, the three of you so so much uh, for for playing with me, I man, I, I really appreciate it. I really just appreciate being able to to work with the three of you every day. I, I consider myself very very fortunate. Um, uh, Michael Gavis, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Michael Galvis and also on D and D Beyond, where I will um, I handle publishing content and writing content. And if you guys haven't checked out any of the articles that he's taking care of right now, you are doing yourself a disservice. Make sure you are checking it out. Melly Doucette, where can people find you? Yeah, I'm on Twitter as well, at Melly DM. And I mean, the d and Beyond Discord and the d and Beyond forums are great places not only to see me and my amazing team of moderators, but to find people to play the game with. To play this game, maybe Absolutely. to play this adventure. 100%. And finally, uh, Amy Dallin. Uh, happy birthday, uh, a day late. Where can people find you? Thank you! You can find me everywhere at Enthusiamy. Uh, you should be checking out everything these people do. I do have to shout out Michael Gowis. You wrote up 
the article for Taliesin's Domain of Dread yesterday, like, instantly, somehow. <laughs> uh, and it's so good. Uh, and it's really good. so, so wonderful. Uh, and everyone should go read it immediately, please. Uh, and yeah, I am so excited to play this. It is so hard not to be like, everything is wonderful about this, because it's terrifying. Uh, it's but horrible. your characters are awesome, and I'm really excited to be on this adventure with them. Uh, it's going to be fun. Uh, we'll be here. Uh, we'll be here for the next uh, three Wednesdays, playing through the House of Lament. Uh, I'm Joe Starr, and I'm just super appreciative uh, that you guys tuned in uh, to watch us just sit back, play a little low key D and D. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>